Today's big idea is we're going to start to look at a new framework called jQuery Mobile. This is a way for us to quickly create a project that is modern, HTML5 compliant. It's also mobile friendly, so it's quickly able to be viewed on various device sizes. And it's also composed of many widgets for commonly used tasks. If I want to create grids in my design, left column, right column, rows, and all of that, I can do that a lot easier. If I want to create nice looking forms, we haven't talked about forms yet, but for collecting user input, we can use jQuery Mobile. We've also got other widgets that help us like do a date picker. If you need to pick a date, uh, your user needs to pick a date, we have that widget. So jQuery Mobile lets us get up let, let's just get started quickly, have a nice looking interface quickly, and create widgets, common control elements quickly. jQuery Mobile comes from the larger parent uh, project of jQuery. If you've taken other classes here, like the Feud class, the front end web development class, I believe they talk about jQuery extensively. And what jQuery is, it's sort of like shortcuts for JavaScript. Let's say there's 200 commands in JavaScript, and we'll talk about JavaScript, of course, in detail. But uh, let's say there's 200 commands uh, in JavaScript, and jQuery lets you access those commands faster with less typing. The, their motto actually is, uh, write less, do more. Uh, a common thing that we do in, J, in plain old JavaScript is the document.getElementById. And all of that can be summarized as simply a dollar symbol in jQuery. We haven't used jQuery yet because we need to connect to the library that gives us all of those shortcuts. So that's what we're going to look at today. And then we're going to look at the jQuery mobile library, the way for us to quickly create mobile interfaces. And all of that is for us to then start to get ready to create a more powerful, full-featured mobile device project. I want to create a mobile-friendly project quickly, modern version, and uh, to be able to deploy to all devices, Android devices, iPhone devices, Windows devices. We'll do this first from scratch, completely with a blank document, and then we'll see even faster shortcuts. But let's go ahead and open up Notepad with a completely blank document. So launch Notepad, and then we'll do Save As. Notepad++, of course. Let's save as. I'm going to save this to my flash drive. And I'll give you a copy at the end of the day. Save it uh, with today's date. We can call it 2017-0216, jQuery mobile practice. Any sort of name more helpful for you. Uh, but we're saving a file as HTML, of course. I'm putting today's date, jQuery Mobile Practice, just some file name, save a blank document. We're going to start something from scratch. Did everyone get their uh, uh, signature on the, on the pink sheet today? Let's um, save a file. Make sure it's .html. We're going to create the very basic HTML structure that we've seen before, so this will be some practice. We need the doc type <coughs> declaration at the beginning to show that it's an HTML5 compliant document. We need the HTML pairs. Yes. One moment. We need the body pair. Let's create this basic file. Well, you're, you're trying to save you can use the name, but you're trying to save it to my flash drive, my C drive, so cancel it. And if not, then let's go to your desktop flash drive or something.
So we're creating this basic HTML structure. We need a meta tag car set UTF-8 and a title. We'll call this my first jQuery mobile. Maybe an H1. Jquery mobile intro. Nothing special. We've done We've seen this before, we haven't had to type it manually in a little while, but just take a moment to type something like that. None of this should be alien to you. Doc type, we've seen these tags, we've seen the meta car set and all of that. We've seen this, this should not be alien. Let's take a moment to uh, type it up. We'll proceed in just a bit. This of course could also be an example of, a, of, of your own starting point. If you're going to create a document from scratch, you may, at this point, want to do a file, save a copy as. If you've typed all of this and this is complete, this is a complete website. It's very boring. This is a complete website. This could be a very good starting point for future projects. You can go to File menu, save a copy as, and call it template, let's say. And next time you need to start from the beginning, instead of typing those 10 lines over, you just open your template file to start anew. In any event, type that, and then we'll see what, how we proceed. All right, so we're going to add a meta tag at the top in the head block, which is one extra step to start to make our mobile make our project more mobile friendly. When we created the Marvel blog uh, as we were testing it, I, I remembered eventually as we were testing it sometimes, Chrome didn't cut, up, cut it off. A few of you noticed if you were testing the Marvel blog in Chrome and you went to those different modes, like the iPhone mode or whatever, it didn't cut it off, it just shrunk it down. We forgot to put this line that we're going to mention right now. This line, this meta tag that we're about to add makes it even more mobile friendly. Our CSS style sheet was one part of it, and then this meta tag, which we forgot, was another part of it. Um, we can add this line back to your Marvel blog to make it even better, but it should work pretty well without it. Here's what we'll do. We'll add, after title, a new line 6, another meta tag. Meta has no pair, but it has a few attributes. The attribute of name equals quotes something, and content equals quotes something. You can give yourself a note here. for maximum mobile friendliness. This line that we're going to complete in a moment is very commonly used when you deal with most modern mobile friendly websites. I do recommend you will not be penalized if you don't do it. I recommend that you add this line back to your Marvel blog site to make it even better. Specifically, name is viewport. Viewport is the fancy term for the main visible area of the site, basically the body. 
we're about to say here. Let's add some special features uh, to the viewport to make it look the best on a mobile device. Content will be initial scale. Initial scale is two words with a dash equals one. If you go to a, a website on your mobile device, in your browser, sometimes you see a website that the text is really small. Have you noticed that? You go to a website, your text is really small, you have to zoom in to even read the text or double tap to zoom in. That's because it was not set up as mobile friendly. This is starting to say, uh, when a person visits your site, set the initial scale, the initial zoom, so to speak, to 1, 100%. Zoom us in automatically 100% when a person visits your, <coughs> visits your site. So initial scale, the automatic zoom, 100%. Comma. This is still inside of the quotes. So any content, basically in the viewport, anything in the body, zoom it to 100%. And comma space user dash scalable equals no. If you're using a an app like Instagram or Facebook. Do you ever really zoom in to use it? Do you zoom in because the Facebook button's too small? No, it's always sized properly. Uh, there's no zooming in and out on apps. If you've got a picture, yes, you can zoom in on the picture. That's something else. But the actual interface, the interface of Instagram or Snapchat and all of that is perfectly set up for your device, no matter the size of the device. You, there's no need to zoom in and out of it to manipulate the navigation menus and such. That's what we're saying here. Don't let the user zoom in or zoom out. They don't need to. We've already scaled the interface to 100%. No need to zoom it in or zoom it out anymore. This will be more important once we actually put it as an app so that we don't break the illusion. We're going to take a website and elevate it to an app. And we don't want that illusion broken by letting people zoom in and zoom out of the interface. You never do that on a real app. The reason also it's perfectly proportioned to the screen is because then we add one more meta uh, one more content here in viewport comma space width equals device dash width the width of my project anything in the body the viewport automatically stretch the width of that to be the width of the device if I've got a four inch phone stretch out the project to fit it that width. If I've got a 7-inch phone, stretch it out also to be that width. If I go um, landscape, well that's a different kind of width now. Anyway, stretch it out to fill that width. Keep everything zoomed 100%. <coughs> Don't let the user zoom in and out. And stretch it out to 100%, to the width of the device, portrait or landscape. If you would like a note on that, I'm going to add on the next line. Uh, zoom the view to 100%, comma, disallow zooming in or out, and stretch interface or stretch, yeah, stretch the interface and stretch the content to device devices width. That's what the line basically says. If you add that line back to your Marvel blog, that would be very good. You will not be penalized if you don't add it, but I recommend you do. If you save it and run it, 
and you switch to a mobile view, you might see a little bit of a difference, but there's not much in our site yet. There's not much in our site yet at the moment to really notice this. We'll notice it much more once we've got a more complex project in just a moment. At the very least, save it and run it to see if there's any trouble with your code. I'm going to run it in Firefox. One way you could test this, I, I went to, took a quick look at Chrome, and I went over to the mobile view, and I activated Galaxy S. Without that line, this is the issue that I was saying, that everything looks zoomed out. With that line that we just added, it does zoom it for that to be a little more visible. In the Chrome developers panel, mobile view, some mobile device, you should see your text nice and big. If you don't see it in Firefox, don't worry, it works. But this, it, this line right there fully makes it mobile friendly. In order for us to then start to use jQuery or jQuery Mobile or any other JavaScript library, we'll use another one later on when we want to talk about databases, we need to connect to it. Just like we had um, a link to a style sheet, my styles, whatever we called it, styles.css, we need to link to an external file, three of them actually. We link to these external files, and then we have the full capabilities of jQuery, and jQuery Mobile, which we'll spend a lot of time also learning. After this viewport, after this meta tag of viewport, still in the head block, we're going to add a link. Links are for style sheets. rel equals style sheet. We saw in the previous, in the Marvel blog, we needed to access those special cool fonts from Google Fonts. Uh, we had a link to their style sheet. Now they wrote link href and then rel style sheet. Either or, doesn't matter. But I'm going to write the rel first to show this link is related to a style sheet. href. This is going to be a long line and you're not going to need to type it manually at all once I show you where to copy the link from, but we'll type it manually one time. We'll type http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. It's a long line, but HTTP, it's on the web, code, subdirectory dot jQuery, or subdomain dot jQuery dot com server, slash mobile subdirectory dot 145, we're using the latest version of the jQuery mobile, slash jQuery dot mobile, the actual file is right there. CSS. So we're connecting to a CSS file on a server. Later on, we will download the file and have it locally, because what this does is it connects us to the jQuery mobile library, but if we have no internet connection, it won't work. And our website, our project, our mobile app will suddenly be plain black and white. With this and two more lines, we will then have the mobile-friendly aspects of this framework and all of the widgets that we have. Just confirm your code. Once again, HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery, that's not an I, jQuery dot com 
slash mobile mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min dot CSS. The dot min part of it means it's been minified, it's been compressed, it's been optimized. It's also not that human readable. There's like 5,000 lines of code in this file. And it's been compressed, all the white space removed, all the tabs, all the indentation, all of that. It's been compressed for speed. We don't really need to look in that file. It's a black box. We just need to know how to use it, which we'll talk about today, of course. <coughs> we need two more files. These are then JavaScript files. This is all about the CSS classes and IDs built in. We then want to connect to the JavaScript libraries and it's common practice to have JavaScript as the last items before the body ends. So inside of body before slash body write script tags. I'll keep, keep these on one line. If we were writing JavaScript manually or embedded, we would write the JavaScript code between those tags. But we also use the script tags to connect to a JavaScript file elsewhere, on another server or in our own project. And for the moment, we'll connect to the one on the server. And that needs an attribute of source. So we have the script tag open and close. We're not going to write any JavaScript between those tags. You shouldn't if you're going to use it for an external file. The script tag will either be for internal, embedded, or external, but they cannot be for the same thing. This will be external, so we need the attribute source. And this is another long address, very similar. Actually, well, we'll do that in a moment. So HTTP colon slash slash um, code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js. Make sure that's a JavaScript file right there. This is another file on a server with five thousand lines of code that has been prepackaged for us, ready to use. We will learn what those possible commands and such are as time goes on. And now here we've connected to the jQuery library. We can go to jQuery.com and read the manual, the hundreds of pages of the manual there, to see how it all works. And again, like most code, it's impressive if you know all the code, but not necessary. You don't need to know every line of code. How, how often are you going to use a certain HTML tag? You know, the, the Q tag. How often are you going to use the CSS um, uh, you know, drop shadow or whatever. You don't need to know every single HTML or CSS. You don't need to know every JavaScript command. You don't need to know every jQuery command. You need to know where to look at where to look it up. If you do need to know a command, next line, another script, another JavaScript file, source equals something. And actually, we can save ourselves a little bit of typing. If you copy the previous line, only the, only the link, the part into the href, copy the previous line of jQuery mobile and paste it into that source, but change it so that it's a JavaScript file, not a CSS file. I'm going to copy that line just the address. Paste it into that source. And make sure to change it .min.js. This assumes you type the first line properly, and we will see if we did right now. Save it and run it.
This assumes I typed it right. Let me see mine. Here's before, no jQuery or jQuery mobile. Here's after. <coughs> Style is slightly different. <coughs> Instead of a plain white background, I'm getting a grayish background. Instead of a serif font, I'm getting a sans serif font. I'm also getting no space right here. So if yours doesn't look like that, if it still looks like that, you mistyped something. So let me pause. It was a long line of code, three long lines of code. Zoom in a bit. So you need lines 8, 12, and 13. Raise your hand, how many of you got the jQuery looking design, the gray background? Okay, good. If you didn't, double check your code, see me. But we need that to work definitely before moving on. This is like trying to use something that we're not holding on to. If I'm trying to open the door, I'm not even holding the handle, I can't open the door. Let's make sure this code is proper, properly set up. It should look like this. Slightly gray in the back, sans serif, so plain block letters, no margin or padding, whatever there, some at the top but not at the left. If it didn't work, it would look like that. A serif font, white background with space. These three lines of code are now giving us access to a lot of powerful things. To use jQuery to write complex code, easier, and then also a whole mobile-friendly structure. In the Marvel blog, I had said, we've got a home page, maybe called home.html. And if I were to click on the villains link, that would normally then go take me to villains.html. And if I were to click on the Green Goblin, that would take me to greengoblin.html. Every screen is a separate file, a separate entity. That's classic web design since day one, 1989, when HTML was invented. You would have a separate file for each separate screen of your project, of your website. What's gaining a lot of popularity uh, for various reasons is to have instead a single page project commonly called an SPA single page app in that in one file I have the home the home screen the villains screen the about screen the content screen contact screen all of those four separate sections screens are in one file instead of four separate files. There's pros and cons to both, both approaches. As we'll see, we, we won't get muddled in with the details at the moment. But we're setting ourselves up to be able to do that with jQuery Mobile. We can have a screen for home and a screen for about in one file. Let's actually do that. In the body, before heading one. Let's write the section tag. In the section tag we'll write a heading one called page one. After that section, another section. We'll call that heading one, page two. So, section of content, page one, section of content, page two. Ignore that one for the moment. The intro line, just ignore it. 
but we're creating sections of content, screenfuls of content. Save it and run it. Nope, don't worry about that. Go ahead with an H1. I'll explain H2s and such, why they might be more useful in a moment. They're all H1s for the moment. Section. Yeah, when you're H2, it's H2 in the moment. Oh, okay. Well, didn't really matter, but okay. So save it and run it. Hmm. They still show up on one screen. Well, that's normal. That's normal because by themselves, the section tags don't have any special meaning. Simply, this is a section of content. This is a section of content. We will then use jQuery Mobile to sort of upgrade these tags to make them behave like a section, a screenful of content, separate from another screenful of content. And that is by adding the attribute data dash role equals page. Now if you save it and run it. You should see what we're getting at. Data dash role equals page attribute added to a section. Has that section take over the screen completely as one uh, content screen. So running that, I only see page one. The rest of the code still exists. If I were to do view source, of course, it still exists. It's just that because of jQuery mobile specifically, it hides the rest of the content via some, you know, 20 lines of JavaScript hidden behind the scenes. And it only shows you your section, your first section, page one. So we can write a note. Pages of content are separated with data role page on a section, in a section, applied to a section. So section tags by themselves don't have any special meaning. They didn't have any special meaning in the Marvel blog. After we added CSS, then we got a left column and a right column. So think about it the same way here. But specifically with jQuery Mobile, data role equals page somewhere behind the scenes, somewhere in the hundreds of lines of code of CSS and JavaScript, that makes it full screen, takes it over, hides the rest. And we get a screen full of content. So if we wanted to look it up in the, in the file somewhere here, there's going to be dozens of lines of code that explain that. No need. I just need to know. Data role equals page. I've got a page of content. Which can have paragraphs and text and videos and links and audio and contact forms and anything. The whole Marvel blog could be set up on that section, and then a screen for Spider-Man would be its own section, its own screenful. A contact page would be its own section. If I want to, um, to go to page 2, let's make a link. A tag go to page 2. Okay, that's going to be a link. What are we missing? The href attribute. So href equals something. Yes. I'll be with you one moment. So href, we want to go from one page to another page here. But at the moment, there is no unique identifier 
There is no unique name for this section or the first section, actually. Let's back up. Section, data role page, one more attribute, ID. We'll call this page one. We can call it home. We can call it start. Call it kitty cat. We can call it anything we want to uniquely identify it as opposed to every other section or screen in your project. That's how we can keep them separate. That's how we can have an SPA, a single page app. All of these different screens are separated. They need an ID. This ID actually is related to CSS. IDs and classes. We've been using classes over and over. We haven't really touched IDs. That's technically CSS, <coughs> but jQuery Mobile borrows it, basically, to use it for navigation. Call it page one, whatever you want. Section data role equals page. Any screen full of content should be set up as data role equals page with an ID of, let's say, page 2, or contact, contact us. And these rules here, if I wanted to call this contact us, I would call it something like that, lowercase, no spaces, could use underscores, I guess. You could do camel caps or intercaps, which is capitalization inside of the word, but definitely no spaces on the IDs. I'm keeping it very simple, page two. Because then now, to complete my link, I have a unique identifier. When I click on page two, I want it to go to the page called page two, pound sign, page two. In CSS, an ID <coughs> becomes shorthand pound sign. Like when we were dealing with classes, we had class equals wrapper. But when we wrote it in the CSS, it was dot wrapper. Here, with IDs, it's ID equals something, and then it's pound sign page two. Do not put a pound sign here, because then it's like pound sign equals pound sign page <coughs> two. It's ID equals the name, and then it's pound here. You don't write ID equals here, that's the shorthand. If you save it and run it, I'm on page one, I've got a link for page two, I click that, page two. So if we're up to that point, very good. If if not, let me pause. Question. I'll be with you one moment. Let me pull my code up again. If that if that page one, page two stuff is not working, triple check your jQuery link up here. Your jQuery mobile link and scripts, because most likely that's what did it. And I'll be with you with one moment. <coughs>
7 h slash html on line 24 and body are purple. The LTD includes your quote. You will bring your quote on line 22. On line 22, you will bring your quote in general copy. So my last is this comment.
So at this point, um, obviously the spelling of these links are very important, but once they're spelled properly, it's just some copy and paste when we want to do this again in the future. But the big idea that we've got here now is because of jQuery Mobile and jQuery, we've got this concept where we can separate various screens of content in sections. And with a section and a data role, of page, we have screenfuls of content. To navigate between the screenfuls, then, each needs an ID, a unique identifier. And these IDs, again, a unique identifier. I can only call one thing in all my 500 lines of code, page one. It has to be that way, because if I click a button, how will it know to go to this section on line 100 or that section on line 20? So it has to have a unique identifier used once throughout the whole project, throughout the whole file. So page one, section, <coughs> page two, section. Um, ID is, is <coughs> nothing special. It's, it's plain old you know, HTML. 1.0, so to speak. It's nothing new or special. It's just that it's been used by jQuery Mobile. Question? Mm -hmm. 
file or just the way to three separate files for that section? I don't quite get that. What do you mean separate files? Were you calling that like a specific section? <coughs> This only matters on this document. If I've got another document called kittycat.html, I could reuse page one, page two, page three, because it's a separate file. So within the one file, these need to be unique. Let's go over to the href, the link. And after the attribute of href, let's add data role equals button. Save it and run it. Add a data role of button to the link. Run it and see what happens. The basic idea of jQuery Mobile is we're using it to upgrade plain old HTML. Section, it's a modern HTML5 tag, but it doesn't have any inherent meaning. With data role, suddenly has meaning. A tag is a link, a plain old link from HTML 1.0, 1989. Data role button has then, should have upgraded it to a button. With a drop shadow effect, rounded corners, I roll over, I get a rollover effect. We saw a moment ago <coughs> that was a plain old link. Data role equals button, it's a button. Let's add another attribute here. Data-icon equals user. Run that. Add the data-icon attribute with the value of user to that link, which has become a button. What do you get there? You get an icon added to your button. We have a set of about 50 built-in icons, and we can define our own. There's a bunch of these that exist. We can look them up, of course, on the official website, which we'll do later. We have home. We have an icon that is uh, specifically designed for home buttons. We have an icon um, I always forget, it's either mail or email. It's mail, M-A-I-L. Let's say we have a button that we want to send an email in your app. Data icon equals mail. And I get a nice little envelope here. What else we have? Um, R dash arrow. What do you think that does? Well, if you spell it right, if I spell it right, R arrow, what's it called? Uh, R carrots. One of those. It's obviously more impressive if you remember what they're called. Um, what are they called? Arrow R. I think it's backwards. There we go. Backwards. Arrow dash R. See, I don't have to have them all memorized. I can go look them up. It's obviously more impressive if I can regurgitate them. <coughs> but arrow dot dash R. Arrow dash U for up. There's another one here, caret dash r. It's a different kind of arrow. Dash u caret up. <coughs> what do we have? I think one called navigation. So we get a navigation arrow like a compass. I think there's another one, camera. A camera. So there's 50 of them built in, and we can define our own later. This comes from jQuery Mobile again. Somewhere in the hundreds of lines of code of this CSS file, basically it says, wherever you use data icon equals camera, put in the picture of the camera in that button. That's the whole point of these libraries. Write less, do more. I'll, I just have to write data icon equals camera, and I get a camera in a circle on the left side, properly sized, nice and sharp. 
I wanted a button. I could design my own button. We saw a little bit of that ourselves in the Marvel blog. We made buttons and rollovers and all of that. We had A colon hover and then we, we defined it. Somewhere in the hundreds of lines of that jQuery file, jQuery mobile file, is the same thing. A link will look like this with a border, with a gradient, with a drop shadow. A hover will look like this. So I don't need to know where in the lines of code there, I just need to know what particular shortcut for me to use. So these data roles for a page, the data role of a button, we have other data roles that we'll see later. If we wanted the icon to the right, we have a way to move it to the right as well. If we wanted a different color, we have a variety of things to do as well. Data-theme equals B. The default of all of this is theme A. Data theme B then activates the alternative theme, a dark theme. So now that button has a different style. We then will later on define our own data theme C, data theme D, and we'll choose our own colors. But in the beginning, we'll have a very plain design with theme A or theme B, and later on we will be able to add our own colors and design and a lot of other cool things. So sections are used to divide up the screens of content. But it's not quite complete here, so let's back up before heading 1. I'm going to tab heading 1. I actually want this heading 1 inside of another element we'll call header. That sounds familiar. We talked about headers also. Header by itself here has no inherent meaning. It's simply for semantics, semantic HTML, <laughs> that the meaning of this is content at the head, at the top. But visually, it has no meaning until we add data-role equals header. Save and run that. Let's see what happens. So uh, I, uh, I wrapped the header around the h1 and added the attribute data role header. And what that should give you is page 1 is now at the top. It's been separated visually from the rest. It's been centered. If I grow and shrink my design, it always stays in the center. So I have a little area for the header. Let's go after that link and add a footer. And let's type here an H4. I'll explain my logic behind the numbers of the H's in a moment. We will write here like just footer text goes here. Just some placeholder. <coughs> just some placeholder. Just whatever down here. Footer area of the design. Header area of the design. But footer has no inherent meaning. What do you think we need to do? Data roll equals footer.
So we've divided up the content header block, footer block, header at the top, footer at the bottom. They've been upgraded with data roles. Pretty straightforward. Data role of header, data role of footer. I save it and I run it. Header and footer. Now, call me crazy, but shouldn't the footer be at the foot? At the bottom? Well, we need one more attribute here. By default, the footer will only be as far down as your main content. And my main content right now is a link. I want to stick the footer definitely at the bottom, down here one more attribute for that. Because via CSS uh, and setting widths and heights and all of that, I could do that. But it's built in if I simply then add data position. Now of course notice that all of this is inside of the tag of footer. All these attributes are in that tag. Make sure you don't put them outside because then they don't make sense. These attributes are in the tag data position fixed. That will then affix the footer to the bottom, no matter the height of your device, no matter the height of the content, it'll be at the foot of the bottom of the viewport, of the screen. Data position fixed. Save and run that. To get the full effect here, I'm uh, resizing my web browser. I'm simply doing it like a kind of like a tall design. If I have it maximized like that, you get the idea, but I'm going to have it like a tall, thin no, uh, tablet or <coughs> phone kind of size, something like that, just to kind of get the effect that it's on a mobile device. Just pulling that width out. Yes? We're going to take a break in just a moment to make sure we're all on the same page here. But at this point, I've got a page one, and I've got a content, header and footer. I've got the header, I've got the footer, and then a little bit of content there. So uh, we'll do one more thing, then we'll take we'll take our break. This button. I'm going to tab the button. I've got a block for footer. I've got a block for header. I want a main content block. So I'm going to wrap. This one's the one, one of the ones that doesn't quite make sense. Article. But we've looked at articles before in the Marvel blog. We there, it's much more, it makes more sense that it's literally this article is about Spider Man. This article is about Doctor Doom. Here, with jQuery Mobile, building a single page app, an SPA, a screen full is a section, the top is header, makes sense, the bottom is footer, makes sense, and the main content between, sandwiched between, is an article. And this one's also a little bit different. In the old version of jQuery Mobile, we did have data role equals content, but don't use the old version, it's been deprecated. It's going to be removed from the new version. I don't know why, this makes perfect sense, but now they want us to do it this way. They want it to be role equals main, not data role. And then another attribute, class equals UI dash content. So every other one is data role. Make perfect sense. And the old version, a couple of years ago, was data role equals content. And it'll still work, but I don't want to teach that because they're going to remove it. We want to know the new version. Role of main class of UI content. That should be obvious that class is CSS. ID is technically also CSS, but it has the dual purpose of making this a unique name for the section so that we can click a link. But it's also CSS in our CSS file, which further refines it and defines it as a whole page. Article, role main, class, UI dash content. It has to be typed this way. There is a class definition in the CSS file of UI dash content, dot UI dash content, somewhere in that file. And we're applying it 
to the article. When I run that, slight difference, here's before, here's after. Now there's actually some breathing room, some space on the edge of the content. Before it wasn't there, and now that we see what we were missing, we have a better design, but also properly structured. This is the structure of a section, data roll page, header, data roll header, article, class UI content, and footer, data roll footer. If it works up to this point, great, save it and run it. We'll take our break at 7.22, we'll be back at 7.32. If it's not quite working, let's triple check our code. It's probably a simple misspelling. We'll be back in 10 minutes.